Hi guys, this is Courtney from Willow's Bloom and I am super excited to talk to you guys today about the Aquarius new moon which is happening at 23 degrees of Aquarius on the 11th of February. So let's talk about it. I'm going to give you guys a rundown and then talk about it for each of the signs and where it's going to be. So first of all, right now we're having a stellium in Aquarius and that basically means that we have a ton of planets there at one time. And I'm just gonna apologize really quick because my camera's kind of distracting me. Um, if it goes in and out of focus, I'm sorry. I've been trying to set it up for like an hour. <laughs> um, and I feel like I always have so much camera trouble. But yeah, we're gonna have a stellium of planets in Aquarius, which again is where this moon is happening. So there is tons of forward energy, tons of momentum, encouraging us to make progress, to bring our new ideas to life. Um, it's also making a square to Mars and it's, you know, it's within a five degree orb. So that's a, like, that, we'll still feel that. Um, and this is where we can start to get a little bit of um, kind of like inner tension, you know, realizing I need to make these changes in order to actually go and pursue this new path. And so I do think that that could be supportive, although it won't feel like as supportive as maybe we would want it to. So um, really just the overall vision that I'm seeing for this is that in each of our lives, we're going to have one area where we really want to start bringing these new ideas to life, something that is going to lead us into the next 20 year cycle. So it's like kind of like the beginning of the beginning. This is really where I see like 2021 kicking off with a bang and just kind of setting the stage for what is energetically already going to be happening these next 20 years. Um, and so I think it's going to be a really powerful time. I also love that we have both of the benefics, Venus and Jupiter, the best planets in the zodiac, those are going to be um, conjoined in the sky. So we are going to kind of have blessings from them um, because they are both in Aquarius as well. So it's kind of like waving a magic wand and saying, you know, you really can make something new and different happen in your life. Like, I feel like this is where we start to make quantum leaps. And maybe right now I'll be more on an energetic and thought level because a new moon is like planting a brand new seed. You're not gonna see it grow into anything yet. But I do feel like this is a really, really powerful moment to plant that seed, to be super intentional about what we wanna create and realize that anything is possible. Aquarian energy is traditionally ruled by Saturn and Saturn and, and even the modern ruler Uranus, they both have this element of being um, like extremely different. Um, a lot of outcasts in society will have like strong Saturnian energy and Uranus as well. So both of these planets have this energy of radical change, of radical difference. And I love that because it's basically showing us that maybe in the past, we've tried to do some of these things before and we wanted to find our purpose or we wanted to find our partner or we wanted to move to a different place or become a certain type of person inside or with our habits. And we've probably tried those things again and again in the past. And what I feel like this is this energy is saying is that during this new moon, we actually are going to have the opportunity to break the old cycles and start anew. And that's really what I feel like the, the irritation with Mars is coming in is kind of getting fed up with these old ways that are not serving us. And then Venus and Jupiter are coming together to say, you can do this. We're giving you blessings from the universe, from the stars saying that this is absolutely possible for you. So if you feel like you have kind of lost hope, which I feel like a lot of us have done, if there's some situation in your life where you feel like you have lost hope in 2020, I want you guys to be really, really careful about your thoughts and the energy in which you are moving forward into 2021 because we don't want to carry over this this like apathy for life or this learned helplessness where we keep trying to do something and it doesn't work so we end up just giving up and, and if we had only known better, maybe we tried one more time and it would have worked. And so what I want to say is that it's a time to disregard the learned helplessness, to really call on our faith about the future of humanity, about the future of our lives, and realize that this is absolutely where we can make those big picture changes where we felt like it was maybe never possible before. 
So it's really special, special energy. And I hope that you guys take advantage of it. So I am pulling up all of the wheels on my computer and I'm going to go through where these planets are falling for each of the rising signs to kind of show how this is going to affect you personally. So for Aries risings, this Aquarius new moon is happening in your 11th house. So this is definitely coming in in terms of friendship. You guys are absolutely being guided to create new connections with people, to join new and different groups where you feel like you are like, like, like you feel like you truly belong. I feel like this is your opportunity now to make waves in society, to find your place among people. And it might have felt like before this point in time, like you made friends and everything was good, but maybe you didn't make those really deep soul connections. And now is your opportunity to do so. It's also a really wonderful time for you to think about how you want to make an impact on the world on a larger scale. So you guys have been having a lot of energy in the 10th house the past year and a half. So that means that you've been establishing your career for the past year and a half and really getting clear on where you want to take things in your career. I know quite a few Aries risings and I have seen them really shine this past year and come into their own. Oh, I just pulled a card for you guys and it's the card of abundance. That is so special. That, that is very, very exciting. Um, so yeah, I feel like you guys have done a lot to cultivate abundance within your career. And now it's time to take it one step further and be thinking about the collective and how you, how you can take your work and impact a larger group of people. And it's really beautiful that I pulled the justice card, which is a very Libran energy, which is again, concerned with balancing the scales. I think you guys are reaching this place of abundance where you have achieved a lot within your career. And now it's time to go ahead and give some of that back. So join a group where you feel like you can do that, where you feel like you can be of service and where you feel like you can totally shine from within and be, you know, your true authentic self somewhere where you feel like you're really accepted. So now is the time to start carving out your place in society, um, to benefit society, but also to benefit yourself. So be thinking about your friend groups, be thinking about the things that you want to create um, in your community over the next year, especially over the next you know six months, which is when the full moon in Aquarius will happen. So that is it for Aries risings. And up next we have Taurus rising. So for you guys, this moon, this Aquarius new moon is happening in your 10th house of career. So this is going to be really beautiful. Whenever something is happening in the 10th house, we feel it come to fruition in our lives. Um, I just pulled the card earth or Gaia for you guys, which is really cool. Um, which is really the, the energy of Taurus is the earth. So um, I'd be interested to see kind of how that comes to play for you guys. Cause whenever I think about the earth, I'm thinking about like a physical manifestation of our desires. And I think again, as I was just mentioning, whenever we have, um, a new moon in the 10th house, we start to see physical things come into our life. It's not just energy. It's not just thoughts. It's not just, um, you know, whatever else there is. <laughs> it's, it's something tangible. Wow. Oh, I love this card. Okay. So I pulled the card. You are ready. So I think you guys are being initiated at this phase into a new chapter within your career. And it's saying you are ready to start this new travel, this new adventure. You see this person is going into the woods. They've got so many cups. They've got so much um, fulfillment from where they are, but they are leaving to go find more. They're leaving to go find their true happiness and their path. And so I definitely feel like this new moon is going to, within the next six months, lead you to come into your own in terms of your career. You're going to start to see things kind of fall into your lap, actual manifestations um, appearing in your life where you can follow the, the breadcrumbs until you find something that feels extremely meaningful for you. Um, and that's really what this is. It's a journey. It's a new moon. It is not there yet. You guys are not meant to be there yet. And so it's going to be very important for you guys to, again, follow the breadcrumbs, to have a lot of patience with yourself at this time. And yes, to realize that this is a blessing. So if things are coming in and you don't know why and you don't know where they're leading, that's okay. It's a blessing and you guys are meant to follow whatever it is that's coming to you. Okay. It looks like my video is kind of lagging. So 
I hope that's not the case, but again, you can always listen to the audio. Okay, up next we have Gemini Risings. So for you guys, this um, new moon in Aquarius is happening in your ninth house. And um, I just pulled the card Rebirth, Isis, Ace of Swords. Interesting. Okay, so whenever we have a new moon in the ninth house, it's giving us almost an opportunity to look at life um, through a different lens because the ninth house has a lot to do with our belief systems. And so you do have the opportunity right now to kind of have a rebirth in terms of the way that you view the world. And Gemini Risings, you guys have had a really hard 2020. You guys have had um, all of the challenging planets, Saturn and Pluto, moving through your eighth house, asking you to go through this rebirth process. So this is energy you're already extremely familiar with. You have already done a massive rebirth this past year. And I feel like the ninth house is where we finally start to feel some more optimism come in. So it's like we're starting to, like now that we've emerged from the cocoon, we're starting to feel like, wow, I'm this new person and I'm seeing the world with these new eyes. And there's actually a lot more hope now that the kind of, you know, like the shadows and the clouds have lifted, there's actually hope for what is to come. And I feel like that's what this Ace of Swords is saying is that you guys are going to get these new insights and new ideas about how to view the world. And it's going to have a profound effect on the course of your life, which is really exciting. Um, and I'm, yeah, this is, I definitely feel like this is going to develop for you in big ways, but you've already done a lot of the internal work in which it's going to develop. So I feel like the new ideas and things are kind of like um, going to redirect you in your life on the external because you've already done so much of the internal work. And I think the not the right time is trying to t basically tell you guys that your time is going to come, but you're not fully finished from this rebirth experience. You guys are still mending. You guys are still adapting, still adjusting, and still having new insights come in. And it's not a finalized um step of the process and so it's going to be important for you to just kind of ride this out and see where these new ideas take you and I, as i was saying with taurus risings follow the breadcrumbs because that's going to help you significantly okay up next we have cancer rising and for you guys this aquarius new moon is happening in your eighth house so the eighth house is always one that's a little bit more challenging to have um, some things come up in. I mean, it doesn't have to be that way, right? It, we can, there are many interpretations of the eighth house, which can sometimes make it challenging to explain, but um, adaptability. Yeah, I do, I do feel like this is going to, um, oh, interesting. I have three of pentacles. Sorry, I'm kind of like, not great at multitasking right now. Listen to your intuition. Okay. Yeah. So it's funny that I got the three pentacles because the eighth house is about shared resources and it's about creating a sense of intimacy with other people, connecting on a deeper level and working together to create a life together, um, to create a big business together. It could be even, you know, you working with your clients on a deeper level. And so you guys are going to have some form of coming together in, in terms of likely in terms of resources with another person or um, there's going, it could be just energy as well. There's going to be some kind of union happening where you guys are going to be working as a team in order to achieve a goal. Um, and the eighth house is, is definitely, like I said, it's a little bit more challenging in the fact that a lot of times when we're going into these deeper vulnerable places with someone, we are confronted with our own shadows. Um, and I think it's going to require a lot of transformation on your part, which is a typical eighth house word, transformation. And that is going to require this adaptability and the use of your intuition. So um, as you're moving through some of these shifts and changes, Make sure that you're really checking in with yourself to see if you feel like you're on the right path. Because I think with the adaptability card, is it's oh the adaptability card is it's basically saying that you guys are gonna have um, some changes coming up these next six months that are gonna be slightly unexpected but gonna be beneficial and it's going to ultimately help you work together to achieve something with with like a partner or with a group of people. There is some element there of collaboration um, and intimacy and understanding one another. But again, there's going to be 
things that come up before then that can kind of like be curveballs or alter your course a little bit. So the adaptability and intu intuition are going to be really important for you to guide you so that you make sure that um, as these new insights are coming in, that you're acting on the things that feel aligned and um, that will ultimately lead you to that successful collaboration. Okay, now we have um, Leo rising. So for Leo, this is happening. Oh, uh, this um, Aquarius new moon is going to be happening in your seventh house of partnerships. So I definitely see a new, wow. Okay, Leo rising. Okay. <laughs> Um, I definitely see some, some beautiful things coming in for you guys in terms of relationships. I just pulled the miracles card. So, oh, and the world. Wow, Leo. I really see some unexpected shifts happening for you guys. Wow. Okay. And this is totally within your field. So like, or within your power essentially, because I pulled the, it's up to you card. So I definitely see new beginnings happening in relationships. So um, however you guys are interpreting that right now is the way that it's meant for you. So if you're single and looking for somebody, if you're looking to move to the next level within an existing relationship, heal aspects of a relationship, um, it doesn't have to be a partner. Most of the time it is, but sometimes the seventh house can be literally attracting clients. It could be, um, like a close family member, close friend. So, um, it's just other people in your life. There is some new beginning in the aspect of your relationships and you guys, I'm seeing some really big shifts. So if you've been having some kind of sour luck lately, when it comes to relationships, I'm seeing that really shifting. The world card is coming up to say, that the energy is finally turning, that the world is finally turning, and that you're going to have this new beginning and this new opportunity come in for you. And it's going to feel like a miracle because after all the hardship of 2020, it can feel challenging in relationships with people um, just in general. And so I feel like you guys are gonna finally have a miracle come in, something that you never really anticipate, something that you never really expected, but is the answer to your prayers. So that's super beautiful, Leo. I'm excited to see how this manifests in your relationship. Relationships. Okay, up next we have Virgo rising. So Virgo risings for you guys, um, this new moon in Aquarius is happening in your sixth house, um, which is honestly a hard house to have, um, you know, lots of planets and things happening in just because in, um, in traditional astrology, the sixth house is a house of illness, of suffering, of slavery. So, um, it is kind of a hard one. However, um, it is Virgo energy. So there's a lot of overlap between your essence and the sixth house in the sense that um, hard work is associated with it, being of service to others. And so I feel like that's how this is going to play out for you. Wow, very cool. Okay, so this Aquarius new moon is trying to bring in some blessings for you guys in terms of your career. So you've been working really hard on something. I feel like that's what this Ace of Pentacles is, is you've been working hard on something and now you're gonna have a new opportunity come in into the physical material world. It could literally be finances or it could just be an opportunity through your work. And I do feel like it's through your work. Um, I got this Be Assertive card, which to me is saying that this is coming from your own hard work and you're going to have to do some more action in order to make this happen in order to close the deal so if you're looking for example to um to change positions to find a new new place in your work or um there's some sort of opportunity that is going to change the course of your daily life so um whether if you're stay at home mom that could be some aspect where you're gonna have an opportunity to change something in your daily routine but a lot of times it is work because that's where we're spending most of our time so it's again it's going to in um, require you to use your own will, your own assertion to make it happen. So don't stand in the sidelines. You guys need to go out and um, use your will in order to basically promote yourself in some way in your career. Um, and then this communion card is saying to look for the signs. So if you don't even know what I'm talking about right now, be on the lookout for some signs coming up because there will be an opportunity. And sometimes when this communion card, it's comes up, it's kind of saying like the opportunity could be really subtle. It could be something that you might not just immediately see right off the bat. So be on the lookout for the signs and communion also indicates that, that you need to communicate with source, that you need to connect with source. And so there's, I know it says be assertive, but you're not on your own. You are always connected to a higher power that is here to support you. And so in that essence, you're meant to also connect, um, 
kind of like for a boost in order to achieve this new opportunity in your career. Okay, so up next we have Libra Risings. So for you guys, this is happening in your fifth house of romance. Woo! Okay, um, and yeah, Libra Risings, you guys have had honestly a little bit of a rough 2020 as well because you have had um, all of the Saturn and Pluto moving through your fourth house, really shaking you to your core, really questioning your own sense of stability, your family, your home life. Um, basically, whatever you lean on for a foundation has been kind of shook this past year. And maybe you question yourself. Um, maybe you... Uh, yeah, like maybe you just um, learned a lot of new things about yourself in terms of your home and family. But now this is like a lighter time because we're having all this energy in your fifth house, which is a very, very positive placement in the chart. The fifth house is one where things expand, um, where our resources really come to help us, where we are starting to get blessings essentially from the universe. And it's a lot of times we get a lot of like joy and romance coming through in the fifth house. But it's interesting because the cards I pulled for you are a little bit different than that. First of all, um, I pulled the home card, which is funny because I'm just talking about how this past year has really been addressing the issue of home. So I think that this could be some, um, come on now, focus. <laughs> How do like the beauty gurus, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so the issue of home I think is coming up again for you guys um, to really, to reconsider. It's interesting that I pulled this card. So if you have been thinking about your place of living, um, maybe there is some element of that that you need to reconsider. Um, but a lot of times it won't even be your home necessarily. It'll be like the foundation or root of who you are. There are some things that you need to reconsider and readjust and um, get rid of that aren't serving you. And I feel like this is going to come up in your romantic life because the moon is often representing unconscious patterns and shadows, which is very much in line with the fourth house and home and all of this. It's all these unconscious patterns coming from our childhood, from our um, past lives, if you believe in that. And I think a lot of these things could be resurfacing um, if you're getting these new opportunities coming through in your romantic life or even in your career because the fifth house has a lot to do with business. So if you're having new ideas and things come in for you, I do feel like you're going to like equally be challenged to get rid of some of these more negative shadow sides of yourself in order to actually come on, focus, <laughs> in order to actually achieve this new beginning. So it's not like the universe is just handing you this new beginning. It's really asking you to put in the work and leave behind some of the old things that you've already kind of been tackling in 2020 that have already kind of emerged in 2020. You know what they are, um, but now is the time to finally let them go so you can have a stronger romantic life, a happier life in general. Okay, up next we have Scorpio rising. So for you guys, this new moon in Aquarius is happening in your fourth house of home and family. So you guys are definitely going to have your roots shaken a little bit. Um, and it's going to give you guys an opportunity to make some really foundational changes to your life, to your way of being. And it could literally be to your physical home. It could be your relationship to your family members. Um, it's asking you to basically... Um, yeah, consider in what areas of life you've been maybe living on autopilot and how you can go in and make adjustments to those areas so that you can feel more happy and more fulfilled. Because sometimes the fourth house is where we fall in line um, with these really old ways of being that have been ingrained in us from our family. And so this could be a wonderful opportunity to kind of dig those out and replace those with something that's more worthwhile. Um, you guys have, um, you guys got the wisdom card. And so I feel like you guys have probably been going through a lot. And this wisdom card is essentially saying that you guys are getting all of the blessings and the wisdom that have come from those challenging experiences. And that's really similar vibes to, um, the hermit card, which is really all about going within and having this kind of like spiritual experience Wow, I love when my camera does this. It's so fun. Um, I guess it just doesn't want to focus at all now. There we go. If you guys have any camera recommendations, honestly, I'm open to another one. But yeah, the Hermit card has a very similar experience to the Wisdom card. Um, it's really about, like you can see, she's shutting her laptop in this one. Um, it's really about having a lot of 
of um, wisdom that you've learned from these experiences where you are kind of having the opportunity to take some time away from the world to unplug for a second and use this new moon to take care of yourself and um, yeah, heal anything that needs to be healed. And the Ask Your Angels card, I feel like is saying to rely more on your angels and it's very literal. I feel like you guys, um, having a new moon in the fourth house is great to establish a new foundation for your future and new core beliefs and everything like that. But you don't have to do any of that on your own. You can ask your angels, you can connect more spiritually throughout this process in order to really help you guys. So I think that that's going to be, um, one of the most beneficial things for you right now is to take time away, kind of go into that hermit mode, connect to source and see what needs altering so that you can at the foundational level, so you can feel like you're truly, um, manifesting an intentional life that you desire. Okay. Up next we have Sagittarius. So Sag is this new moon in Aquarius is happening in your third house of communication. So, um, I definitely feel like you guys are going to have some new opportunities here to network, to connect online with people, to create new relationships, new friendships. A lot of times when there's activity happening in the third house, there are people moving, traveling. Um, it's basically indicating more change happening in your life, but definitely a lot coming in for forgiveness. I think um, I specifically pulled this card and I feel like it has a lot to do with the communication aspect. So you're not just here to, um, to have new connections. Oh my God, you guys. <gasps> All right. <laughs> I give up. Sorry. Um, yeah. So the, basically I feel like the forgiveness card, there is something here that you're being asked to let go of. And I think the communication coming in with the third house and this new moon here is giving you a new leaf to turn over with someone where you can have a conversation about something that has maybe not been, um, yeah, maybe some aspect of a relationship that hasn't been serving you that you need to communicate about. And I feel like this is going to open you guys up for a lot of new powerful beginnings because you, I pulled the magician card for you guys, which is all about manifestation. And not that the third house is like particularly strong for manifestation, but I just think that there's strong energy for that overall in astrology right now. And so I think it's almost like once you kind of clear up some of this clutter from the past with this forgiveness card, um, whatever needs to be let go, maybe it's forgiving yourself for things that you haven't done correctly or, you know, people in your past, your family, there's always something or someone to forgive. I feel like that's going to pave the way um, that communication either with yourself or with someone else is going to pave the way for you to develop some of these more intense magician skills, which is basically manifesting your dream life. And I also pulled the card, look for a sign. So if you are kind of in this process of wondering, you know, what to manifest, I feel like there are going to be new signs coming in for you because that's also a big part of the third house is receiving messages, receiving divine downloads. So as you kind of, again, clear up this past with the forgiveness, you can get some more messages coming in for you, which will show you about um, the next stage of your path. So if you guys feel like, I don't really know like what to do next. Um, I, I have all this manifestation power, but what am I using it for? Don't worry. Cause you just look for a sign and those signs will come to you. Okay. Up next we have Capricorn risings. So for you guys, this new moon in Aquarius is happening in your second house of resources of finances. So I definitely see some changes coming in for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so literal. I just pulled the 10 of pentacles. You guys, if you know the tarot at all, then you know exactly what that means in terms of money. It means stable finances. It means getting rewards for hard work that you've put in and Capricorn risings. You guys have put in some work this past year. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, so Capricorn Risings, as I mentioned, you have put in the work. And what I mean is that you've done a lot to transform your life, your path, your destiny. You've had Saturn and Pluto moving through the first house, really challenging yourself and your place in the world to step up in a new level, to leave behind um, old ways of being that weren't serving you, to question your life in a lot of different ways. And I feel like this is finally coming through now with this new moon in Aquarius. It's finally coming through and giving you some of those physical, tangible rewards. You can see it's not only like pentacles here, not only money here, but they are celebrating with their family. And I can definitely see that coming through for you guys. This is blessings in all areas of your life coming through, but 
that are going to feel uh, present in your physical material world, which is extremely beautiful. And I feel like you guys have gained so much wisdom from this past year in 2020. You guys have totally transformed your life in a lot of ways, gained so much wisdom, and now you're getting these blessings happening um, again, which I could see new beginnings in terms of finances. Maybe you could buy a house for the first time. Maybe you could be, um, I don't know, like finding your partner. There's so many ways that this could appear for you, but I definitely see this coming through in terms of money. And then this ask for help from others, I think is basically saying that you guys have done a lot of the inner work and now it's okay to rely on other people a little bit more. You're not meant to do all this alone. You're not meant to achieve all these things alone. This kind of success happens with other people, happens with your loved ones by your side, supporting you emotionally, physically, however they're meant to do that. Um, and yeah, so basically it's your time to enjoy this company with others, but also to see like these physical benefits for all the work that you've put in before this time. Okay, up next we have Aquarius rising. So for you guys, this new moon in Aquarius is of course happening in your first house of self, which could always affect your physical body. Um, this is a really big one whenever there's a new moon um, happening. And it's not just a new moon, you guys. There are tons of planets right now in Aquarius. So you guys are feeling supercharged right now. Tons and tons and tons of energy, which is kind of cool. Oh, the lovers, wow. So yeah, this is definitely going to play out big for you guys long term. I'm talking in the next six months, you're going to see a lot of things come to fruition for you, a lot of opportunities coming in for you that are going to give you the ability to totally change and transform your life. So I literally pulled the opportunity card. So if you have been feeling like things haven't been moving forward, if you've been feeling things have been kind of stagnant, don't worry because you're going to have an opportunity now to make those changes. And um, I think you guys are going to achieve so much. I pulled this ambition card, which is really exciting um, because besides having the new moon in your first house having to do with your health, it always has to do with your purpose. The first house and even the ascendant is really like the helm of the ship, the, the part of like the steering wheel of the car essentially. And it's driving your whole life, it's driving your purpose. And this ambition card is basically saying that you guys are gonna have opportunities and it's time to use this energy, use this momentum, use all these planets here for your own benefit because it's really going to come in and give you exactly what you need. And this could manifest in you having a soulmate attraction coming through. If you guys already have this, I really do feel like a lot of the times when I see the lovers, it is Gemini energy because it's talking about duality, it's talking about two. But in this case, I really feel like it's talking about you guys because this is happening in your first house of self. So I think this lover situation, this lover's card is basically saying that there's a union within yourself. You guys have had a lot of kind of more challenging um, times with having Saturn and Pluto move, moving through your 12th house. That's not easy, right? And so you guys have probably questioned yourselves a lot. You guys have probably not really known what the right path was, um, had a lot of clarity because the 12th house is where things go to dissolve. And it was already a challenging year just in general. And so I feel like you're kind of using these next six months to really regain clarity about your life, to really kind of come back to your center, to your core, and take these opportunities that are coming up in your career to make shit happen. So that's really, really cool. Okay, and then last but not least, Pisces rising. You guys, this um, um, new moon in Aquarius is happening in your 12th house, which is somewhat, um, it's not the best house because it's often a very, um, unconscious house where things are less tangible. So this is one of the houses where you're going to be like, I feel it, but I don't see it. And that's going to, yeah, yes. <laughs> I definitely think that's going to be coming up for you guys. Um, interesting. Okay. So I'm just pulling some cards for you guys. And it's funny that I said, you know, I think you guys are going to feel it, but not see it. And I got the King of Swords, which is um, all about ideas, right? All about things coming into our mind, about having clarity within our mind, which I think um, you guys have been having Neptune moving through your first house. This inherently brings a lack of clarity. So I think that this Aquarius new moon is kind of giving you guys a little bit more, um, maybe like truth and downloads about your life, about how things are going and what isn't working, what is working. And 
the 12th house is where we can really have a lot of self undoing where we can have a lot of these bad habits that are not um that are not promoting our own well-being essentially and so i feel like having this king of swords and these truth card are both coming in really strongly to say that it's time to get really brutally honest with yourself about ways that you've been um you know practicing self undoing and how can you make different decisions so that you can feel better in the future and this yes card i feel like is saying that you are absolutely going to have the ability to let go of some of these things whether it's a way of thinking whether it's a way of being whether it's a habit whatever it is you guys are going to have the opportunity and the ability to oh, focus <laughs> All right, whatever. I give up on my camera. It's so frustrating, you guys. Um, but yeah, I think you guys are absolutely going to have the opportunity now to uh, to to let go of some of these things that weren't working. The 12th house is a lot about loss and letting go, but I feel like um, this is going to be on your terms. This is going to be your opportunity to fully let go out of your own decision making. So I think that this is going to be really powerful for yourself. So make sure that you have time alone during this time to really go in and meditate, to talk to your guides and to be brutally honest, write down like on a list, be like, this is what I've been up to that is not serving me. These are the thoughts that are not serving me. This is the way of being that's not serving me. Whatever it is, you guys, there is some element of self undoing that we all are doing at all times and so this is your opportunity to let it go and the yes card is saying that you will do that successfully i hope that you guys enjoyed this if you guys are interested in seeing how this aquarius new moon will affect you personally in terms of your chart you can always purchase a reading a month ahead reading from me at willisbloom.com i'm also offering past life readings i don't know how long i will be doing this but these are definitely my most powerful and most bought and most desired readings out of all of them so i highly recommend those as well and hope you have a great day bye